Good afternoon. Uh, welcome to the Vermont House Human Services Committee. And today is Tuesday, May 4th. And um, the first part of this afternoon's uh, um, committee meeting is um, a, a walkthrough or explanation by legislative council on what uh, the Senate did to our bill H-171, 121, 171, 121. 121, which is the bill um, regarding childcare. Well, what, what, whatever the number is. What's 171. The number? <laughs> 171. 171. Sorry, folks. <laughs> Go ahead, Legislative Council. I better stop talking. <laughs> Good afternoon. Katie McGlynn, Office of Legislative Council. So the um, just this morning, the Senate uh, proposal amendment was posted online. And I've put together a side-by-side um, -side summary. And I was just finishing that up as, um, as the meeting started. So I'm going to pull that up. Um, and then I will send it to Julie after we go over it. And um, I'm sure Julie will be able to post it. So let me see. Are you seeing a chart? OK, great. Um, so I thought it might be easier just to go over the concepts, um, and then if you'd like to look at the language, we could do that as well. Um, but sometimes it's easier just to kind of break it down into smaller conceptual pieces than, than seeing the language on the page. Um, so you'll see in H-171, this was your child care bill, we have this column that was as passed the House. This has a lot of details about what was in your version of the bill. And then of course the next column is as passed the Senate. So um, right at the top, you had the legislative intent section and you'll see that the Senate's version that they sent back, um, although a strike all that section was the same as your version. Um, similarly, there were changes to the Child Care Financial Assistance Program, um, making changes to have the, the co-mavens be um, for the whole family versus um, by child increasing the upper income limit of the fee scale. And all of those changes were accepted by the Senate and the version they sent back to you was the same as the House version. Um, similarly, in section three, this had additional changes to the CCFAP program. And those changes in section three were the same as the version you sent to them. So the first three sections are the same. Um, and then we get to section four. Um, and one thing that Senate appropriations did was they tried to take all of the money out of the bill and put it into the big bill. So you'll see that subsection A, which was the appropriation of the 5.5 million for the, um, from GF to the Child Development Division to implement the Child Care Financial Assistance Program, that whole subsection has been removed from the Senate version of the bill because the money is no longer in this bill, it's in, it's in the budget. So subsection A was removed. Um, subsection, sorry, section five was the Bright Futures Information System um, section. This was the technology piece that was needed to implement the changes to the CCFAP program. Um, and there was a subsection A that left the house that said that the funds for the modernization of the um, Bright Futures Information System was located within the Technology Modernization Reserve. That language was removed um, and there was a new um, subsection A that was put in that says to the extent um, that funds exist in fiscal year 2022, the Department for Children and Families are to modernize the Bright Future System. My understanding is that money is in the budget and that they wanted to have a sentence recognizing that there was fund there that there was um, funding needed for this program, and that the department would be directed to modernize the Bright Futures Information System. So that is the change in Section Five, switching out the reserve um, for um, language um, to the extent um, feasible in fiscal year 2022. And I'm going to just make a change on my page so I can see my whole document. Okay, um, section six was the workforce supports. If you recall, there were three programs set up in the house version of the bill um, with regard to scholarships. 
um, for current providers, prospective providers, and there is also a loan repayment program. That language was um, all left intact. So the Senate version um, did not make any changes to section six of the bill. Section seven of the bill was an appropriation for the workforce support programs in section six. If you um, see in this subsection A, you'll see the breakdown of the um, different financial, the, the breakout for the different programs, um, the funding for the different programs. And under the Senate column, you'll see this subsection A was deleted. Again, this is um, the Senate Appropriations Committee taking all of the money out of the bill. So that section was deleted. Um, the heading of that section was updated to no longer include appropriation and there was um, renumbering, but subsection B was retained. Next in the bill was section eight. This was the repeal section for the, um, the workforce programs. If you remember, two of the three workforce programs were set to repeal as of July 1, 2026. That language remained the same in the Senate version. Section nine, um, amended the existing section on building bright futures, powers, and duties. Um, the House added language um, that, that building bright futures would um, look at the administration and operation of Vermont's childcare systems. And you can see there are three changes made um, in the House version of the bill. And the Senate kept all of those changes intact. So their version of section nine is the same as the House version of section nine. The next two sections are really where we see the um, most substantive change um, from the Senate's version of the bill. So just to refresh your memory, I know it's been a while since we looked at this. Um, there were two sections in the House version of H-171 that dealt with funds coming into the state through the American Rescue Plan Act, the, the ARPA, and there were two, um, I've been calling them pots of money within ARPA that were directed for um, childcare programming. One was the block grant and the other was stabilization funds. And so sections 10 and 11 um, treated each of those pots of money separately. So there's a section, section 10, that dealt with the um, childcare development block grant, and then section 11 dealt with the stabilization funds. So in the House version of Section 10, um, the, the bill left the House having language that directed DCF in coordination with Building Bright Futures to convene a working group. And that working group was to be composed of mutually agreed to stakeholders. And then it went on to specify different stakeholder categories that were to be represented by the in this work group. And then, um, the work group in subsection B was directed to make recommendations to the General Assembly to ensure that the use of the ARPA funds um, were effectively utilized to meet the immediate and future needs of Vermonters. And there was this list of all um, different items that the working group was going to consider. Um, and then language that um, the working group isn't only um, limited to looking at this list, they can look at other items, other priorities, but these are lists of priorities that the working group should be looking at. So there is this list, and then a report was supposed to come back to the appropriations committees and subject um, matter committees by November 30th of this year with their recommendations on, um, on spending this money. Um, so that language is not in the Senate version of the bill. Instead, there is link, the section was struck and in its place, there is a report that is due on January 15th of this coming year. And that report comes from DCF um, to the same committees, appropriations committees and subject matter committees describing how um, ARPA child care block grant funds were utilized. So kind of a, a change in um, perspective. So section 10 has passed the house is looking at recommendations for how to spend the money, whereas the language that is coming back from the Senate is a report on how funds were spent. So that is section 10. Section 11 is sort of the, um, in, in my mind, kind of the companion piece to section 10 in that they are both looking at 
ARPA funds, but again, this is a different pot of money within the um, ARPA funds that are coming into the state. This is the stabilization grants. Um, similar to section 10, the version that left the house created a working group. And the working group was um, to make recommendations to ensure that the stabilization grants were um, fully utilized in a timely manner. And by September 1st of this year, DCF was to have sub, um, submitted a report to the Joint Fiscal Committee and to the chairs of Human Services and Health and Welfare containing the working group's recommendations. And upon receipt of this recommendation, the Joint Fiscal Committee was to have five days to approve or reject the working group's recommendations. And if the Joint Fiscal Committee was not going to act within five days, the recommendations would be deemed approved in DCF had authority to distribute funds according to the recommendations. And if the Joint Fiscal Committee rejects the recommendations within five days, they would have to hold a meeting as soon as possible to receive testimony from DCF. So section 11 has been completely deleted um, from the Senate version of the bill. However, there is language in the budget that is meant to take the place of this section 11, the budget as, as um, proposed by the Senate. And that language, while it doesn't have a working group component, it does say that um, DCF in consultation with stakeholders is to provide um, recommendations to both um, the chairs of House Human Services and Senate Health and Welfare and to uh, Joint Fiscal Committee um, for spending this money. And I believe there's language about um, Joint Fiscal Committee approving those expenditures. And I'd have to pull up the exact language to refresh my memory on that piece. So a similar concept, but the, the working group component has been removed and also the component of having JFC act within a certain number of days. Section 12 um, was a reporting requirement. This was the report on, on the attendance-based model versus the enrollment-based model that um, DCF was going to do. The Senate um, did not make any changes to this section. So this is the same language that the House sent over in section 12. Section 13 was the systems analysis study. There have been some changes here. If you recall, um, the House version that um, required uh, Building Bright Futures to analyze and make recommendations on this list of items and the report was to be submitted by Building Bright Futures on September 1st of 2022. Um, that has changed. So instead of um, Bright Futures, Building Bright Futures doing doing the work, instead we have them um, hiring or, or developing and issuing an RFP along with the chairs of House Human Services and Senate Health and Welfare to select an independent consulting entity with expertise in child care and early education to do this work. So that um, RFP would be issued by September 1st of 2021. And then the independent consulting en entity that's hired, selected, um, would be submitting an analysis and recommendations by July 1, 2022, which you'll see is um, a few months earlier than was anticipated in the um, Senate version, excuse me, in the House version. Um, one reason why this date was bumped up was because as you'll see in the next section, which looks at the financing study, some of the dates in the financing study were pushed up. So the idea in pushing the due date for this report up was that the individual who's doing the financing study would benefit from having the results of this systems analysis completed um, to give the person conducting the financing study, um, I think six months to have this final analysis and recommendations to inform the financing study. So then we move to section 14. Here's the financing study. And you'll see um, that the dates have changed. Um, so we have by January 1st, 2022, JFO consulting, contracting with the consultant um, in the house version. 
And then in the Senate version, you have the um, a different date, July 1, 2022, is when JFO is contracting with the consultant. And then um, under the report section, um, if you remember, there were preliminary results that were coming in and then final results. And so the House version had preliminary results coming in November 15th, 2023. Um, but the Senate has preliminary results coming in December 1st, 2022. So you'll see um, because this date up here in section 13 was moved up to July 1, 2022, that the finance and consultant now has five months to utilize the system's um, financing report um, if they're submitting the pre preliminary results by December 1st, 2022. And then the final report is coming in January 15th, 2023. And the only um, change besides the dates to this section um, was that the final results would contain multiple financing options for public and private fund, um, for pub, excuse me, multiple financing options for public and private funding sources. So that um, was a language addition that was made in um, section 14 of the bill. Section 15 was language um, that really came from the House Appropriations Committee. And that was language that um, appropriations from the act um, that ARPA would be used to fund any appropriations in this act, unless it was determined that ARPA couldn't be used, in which case general fund would be used. And so that language was deleted by Senate appropriations. They took all of the money out of this bill. So this language was no longer necessary. So section 15 was deleted. And then we have section 16, the effective date section, and all of the effective dates have remained the same. Although I'm seeing that we struck out section 11 and we still have an effective date. Let me, let me check the Senate proposal of amendment to see if it was caught in the actual proposal. So that brings us to the end um, of this. Um, excuse me, um, Katie. Um, Carl, uh, Representative Rosenquist has a uh, question. Sure. I was really just waiting. Uh, Katie was just done, so I had a, and then it's a, sort of a general question. I, and I probably should know the answer, but what, what is the advantage of money being taken out and putting in the budget? It seems a lot clearer when the money is in the bill that we're talking about these different things. I, I've never understood why they take money out and put it in the budget instead um i think you'll have to ask senate appropriations for that i might suggest it has something to do with their wanting to be um they're wanting the appropriations committee to be um in charge of all of the negotiations as it relates to funding of things in case there's a difference I see. So it's more of a negotiating tactic than anything. If it goes to, uh, I was just curious about the overall thing, not necessarily specifically about ours, but in general, when they move something to. Uh, anyway, um, sorry. Yeah, um, no, no, that's a. It's a good question. Um, um, I've been a legislator for a while, and this seems to be a a new um, in the last couple of years. Uh, process. Um, it reminds me of the federal process where you and in some other states where they pass bills that basically are meaningless until the budget passes. <laughs> that's not that's not the case here, but I'm well, sorry, Carl. No, I was just gonna say one final thing. In the paper this morning, it says state legislature passes ambitious child care bill. So they think it's already done. Uh, obviously, we have to approve this amendment. <clears throat> right. Okay, thank you. And um, uh, just so folks know, there was the um, speaker in pro tem had a sort of press availability, and I was asked um, whether we were going to um, approve the um, Senate amendment. 
And I said, I can promise there won't be a committee of conference and we'll either concur or concur with further amendment. Um, so I made no promises that we would um, accept it point, you know, without any kind of concerns. Um, but I thought whatever the differences are could be resolved that way rather than a um, committee of conference. Uh, Representative Wood, then Representative Rumstead. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so I've seen the language in the appropriations bill. Um, <laughs> and I, uh, I guess this is a question that's sort of along the lines of Representative Rosenquist. I don't really understand why we don't have that language in the bill. <clears throat> um, um, and because it seems it seems a, a little bit inconsistent with Section 10. It, they, it, that they don't seem to, at least in my mind, they don't seem to like totally line up. And I realize that there's sort of two pots of money, uh, you know, two, uh, just to refresh committee members, <clears throat> there's two ARPA pots of money related to childcare. And I realize one has certain sort of strings attached to it, about 50% of it has to be spent by a certain date and all of that kind of stuff. Um, so th this is more of a question, I guess. It's not, I'm not, uh, I'm not expecting an answer, but that's, that seems, um, it seems inconsistent to me without, I guess I need to think about it a little bit more. In section 10, um, I, it, I'll just be frank about it. Section 10, I'm not okay with section 10. Um, section 10 just has the department telling us how they spent the money. And it's too much money for there not to be some policy guidance by the legislature. Um, so um, that's, that's a question mark for me. And then mm -hmm. in section 13, the beginning of the section talks about birth through age five. And then later on in the section, it talks about the language that we had, which had it broken out birth through five and then up to 12 in the second. So, um, I was curious about that. Um, and section 11 is still in the effective dates, Katie, at least in the bill that I'm looking at. So those, those are my sort of immediate things that pop into my head. Um, thanks. Uh, Representative um, Brumstead. I, um, thank, thanks. I, I wondered about section 10 whether or not there's anywhere where they are gonna, any language at all, Katie, where, is Katie with us? Oh yeah, um, <laughs> where they are on, I mean, we had that great list of things for um, the committee to consider. And so I wonder if DCF might still consider that list was my kind of question. It looks like there's nothing in language and I don't know what the conversation was, but that would be a question I would have for Senator Lyons or, or whoever. Maybe this was done by appropriation, so it would be mm -hmm. um, Senator Kitchell. It seems like we're sending them off with an with with the we are sending the administration off with a lot of power, even if we just ask them to consider those things. It, it would make me feel better. Um, the other thing is I heard about new funding for a promising pre-apprenticeship program that was $100,000 in ARPA funds, but I don't see that here. That was added to the workforce development piece, but maybe because, so they're gonna designate that one type of ARPA funds to be spent on something specific, but yet they didn't want us to designate some ideas. So I, um, Great, and Nolan's raising his hand, so maybe he can help me on that one. <laughs> uh, for the record, Nolan and I will join this call off this. Yeah, so in the budget, in section E318.3, I don't know if anyone wants to write that down, that's where the money for the stuff is. So the seven, there's 700,000 for the current prospective early childhood providers. They'd lump them together, the 300 and the 400. There's the 1.8 million for the early childhood student loans. And then yes, there's $100,000 shall be transferred to the Department of Labor for the pre-apprenticeship program and early childhood education provided by Vermont Career and Technical Education Centers. So, so that made me think, maybe there's a way for us 
in the work that the appropriation, our appropriations committee is doing to add in, to pull out some money for some of the things that we've put in that list that we think are important, just like they put 100,000 towards this program and it wouldn't impact us concurring. So anyhow, just an idea I put out there. <laughs> Um, well, I do. I mean, I do think that we, um, we, the royal we, um, <laughs> um, a group of members of the committee need to connect with uh, Kimberly and um, around what is happening with the appropriations committee. Since a bunch of this money is, I mean, since this is now in the budget, and um, the house had a different. At the time the budget left the house, they had a different process for um, expending or deciding where to expend ARPA funds than what the Senate had. And um, I don't want to speak for the Appropriations Committee because I have no idea whether um, as time has passed, they have um, shifted how they want to do that. And, and to follow up, you have Stephanie coming in on Thursday, um, and that she could also help you understand what the Senate conversations were around this. Mm -hmm. Good. Thanks. Although, although we might have to get her in early, we, we might have to do some work with her earlier or, or delay. Just because, just because I said on the floor of the house that we would know what we were doing by Thursday afternoon, we can always delay. Uh, um, uh, Representative McFawn. Thanks, Madam Chair. Um, I too have a problem with section 10. Um, pretty much the same problem Teresa has. We spent a lot of time on that. And um, we, just to say, tell us how you spent it, doesn't, doesn't go with me. Um, we were semi-specific, but um, I thought very deliberative in that section. And uh, just to wipe it out, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not agreeable to that at all. Um, I, I also, um, I, I have to read it again in terms of section 13 and 14, their changes. It, it appears that it's, it's changing and changing dates and moving things up. And I, I think we were told that it couldn't be done in that period of time. And that's why we set the dates the way we did. But I, I want to take a closer look at it. Um, in section 15, uh, they're talking about both both the general fund money and the aqua money. And I'm saying, uh, okay, it doesn't specify where the money's going to come from. You know, I think, put in the budget, but we're, we're, what money are they using? I, um, well, we have, we, we have the money expert. Oh, now the money expert, he was next to you, but now he's at the bottom. He is. Um, that perhaps to can answer that question. I'm, on my screen, I'm on the top, just for the record. But, uh, I'm right next to you. Oh, you're in the you're in the you're in a one cell there. Yeah, uh, Representative. Um, on the funding for the studies, the dates were moved up. Um, if I recall, part of the reason, I mean, yes, there was conversations earlier around, on around timing. Um, there was further conversations about timing, but I think also part of it was that this committee was not to spend money in fiscal year 22 and put it off for 23. That might've been part of the conversation as well. Um, and the Senate felt that it was important enough to move the dates up. We worked with them to try to come up with a timeline of, okay, the, the Building Bright Future study would be done and then JFL would have that study to build on when we did ours. So that was part of the conversation and the timing. So they were willing to spend the money and we had had further timing to think about how those pieces would fit together. So that's kind of why the timing, maybe Katie could fill in a little bit more. She was there as well, but um, yeah. Um, Katie, do you have, can you help us? 
I think a or lot of the, Nolan. <laughs> um, I think a lot of the conversation was um, wanting the information from the studies sooner and looking what was feasible in terms of moving up the dates to get the financing study faster. So there was a lot of conversation with JFO um, about how to make it feasible to kind of accomplish both goals of getting the information, you know, the, the financing study completed earlier and creating a, a time frame that was workable for getting um, an independent consultant on board and giving that person enough time to to complete their work and, and to have access to the other, the completed um, section 13 study to inform that person's work. And then um, on section 10, that I believe that change was made by Senate appropriations um, and not in Senate health and welfare. And I think that had, well, I'll let them speak to why they did that. But I think timing might've been part of it uh, as well as, well, I'll let them speak to it, or, or Stephanie might be able to speak to it. Okay. Um, Chopper, do you have another question right I, now? I, I, I do. Um, so, so then we, uh, as a group, would assume that uh, in Section 14, that JFO was 100% okay with moving the dates up? Yeah, we're fine with that. It was, it, I think our earlier, earlier versions where you were going to have us doing it by the end of this year. Um, but I think when we were having those conversations preliminary, but I think the current language of current timing work, works for us. All right, okay. Because we could do it that's fine Because in the original one, we were making sure that you could get it done. Yeah, I think earlier conversations where the timing uh, was too soon and then we pushed it off two years. And okay. The okay. timing that works in the bill now is it works for us and it works okay. in a way that we can build off of the other study. Okay. And then section 15. Where does the money come from? Section 15. I'm sorry, I'm just trying to keep up with the various. Well, and that was the, the piece that House Appropriation originally added um, that ARPA funds were to be used unless they couldn't be used, in which case general funds were to be used and Senate appropriations took section 15 out because all of the money was taken out of the bill. So I think the question is, we're no longer specifying where in this bill, where money is coming from because there is no money in the bill. Yeah, and so the 5 million that was in the, the first part, the, uh, that was in the governor's budget, that's put in the base and then the other stuff I said, like I said, that's all on section E318.3. Except, uh, and I take that back, the, the workforce stuff is in section E318.3. And then the building by break futures appropriation is a one-time money. That's in, okay, you might want to write this down too. It's in section B. 1106 a7 and that's basically that's a it's basically that section is basically all one-time general fund appropriations and that's money to hire the whole independent list of them. consultant oh, okay and so in section 13 nolan I'm sorry, that what's that? that's the money to hire the independent consultant in section 13 correct that's yeah, the, that's the building bright that's the building bright future correct okay um, Tapper, it, um, is your hand still up for? I don't know. Not, not now. Um, Jessica, and then I want to give, no, um, we have Nolan for like Nolan, five. You have me for five more minutes and I have to go to wait means, but I can come back. Okay. You're still. So I just okay. have a quick follow up to Nolan before you leave. Um, is so I thought Building Bright Futures the two hundred sixty one thousand dollars was base budget to the base budget. In the Senate budget, they have it in one time. So well, they're gonna. This is this is two hundred. I don't know about the two sixty one. This is the two hundred. That's for the, the systems. Contract. Right, that's the systems analysis, but the 261,000 is to the base budget and um, it looked to me like that's in the budget too. Did you 
think that can be too? Well, that wasn't in this bill, so I'm not sure. I haven't followed it. I, I... It's in it's in section. Um, let me see. Building day futures. I don't believe that was in this bill. Yeah, it was. This that was a big win. I remember. Um, hmm. You know, March was like years ago. I know. <laughs> Yes. I guess it's, it's in the regular, it was in the Senate um, House proposal. Of, I mean, the um, uh, Human Services, or the Health and Welfare, sorry. I've got so many bills sitting in front of me, but. Um, I don't see it. I'm looking at my previous bills and I don't see the 261. So, um, Jessica, was it actually part and parcel of H-171? We're hearing that probably not, but what it, but was it, in fact, part of the House passed budget? Yes, and when I talked to Kimberly, she thought it was in the appropriations budget as well, that they had put it there. Right, because... right. So, so, so that wouldn't be here. Okay. That would it, be wouldn't, in... it would be in, so that's something... That's the next part of what we have to focus on, which is the, our parts of the budget. But right now we're just looking at what was actually, how, the, how H-171 differs from how it left us. Okay. Okay. Um, Nolan, before you leave, um, oh, and he's left. No, I'm there. <laughs> Oh, okay. Before you leave, um, <laughs> um, uh, folks, we have, um, he has sent us an updated or a, a revised um, joint fiscal, I mean, fiscal note based on the Senate version. Um, are there, is it too much to start going over? Should we have you go over it another time? Well, I just sent Sorsha email finding out if I have more time with you guys. Oh. So hopefully, because if, if Ways and Means is running behind, so it's, what it's doing is it looks like they're still going on education. So I can start if you'd like. Okay. Well, let me let me first ask because both you and Katie have hard stops. Um, do we have other questions right now for Katie? Because Katie has a hard stop as well. Um, Katie, thank you for the, um, the side by side. And if you send it to Julie, it will be on our um, committee webpage so we can take a look at it um, as part of our homework and things like that. And we'll be circling back to it after we look at it also tomorrow morning. And so, Katie, you know, if you need to run and do other things, feel, please do. Okay, thank you. I'll yeah. see you tomorrow morning. Okay. So Nolan. Okay, you gave me for five more minutes, but I think it was quick. So if, if uh, oh, Julie gave me access. All right. Um, let me just pull something up real quick. I'll find it, there it is, all right. Um, do you guys see the fiscal note or you see? Yep. Okay. So if you guys, if, if you go to the fiscal note and go to the last page, I have a little chart and I think, I think this lays it out. Uh, I hope it lays it out cleanly. Um, so you can see that, you know, for the, this the CC FAP stuff that was in section two and three of your bill, that's in the budget um, on the Senate side. The scholarships, um, the two scholarships, the three hundred, the four hundred thousand, for a total of seven hundred. Um, that's now in section E three eighteen point three of the budget, um, and they've lumped those together. As are the one point eight for student loans. That's also in section E three eighteen point three. So that's all there. Uh, and then the systems analysis study, 
is um, in one-time money, and that's in that's in the section B eleven oh six A seven. And essentially, what I would say is the the in terms of my fiscal note, there's only really a two hundred thousand dollar difference um, in that they funded the building bright future in twenty two. And your bill, you had not, and you had set up the structure for how ARPA, because you didn't have all the information you needed at the time around ARPA. Um, and so I would say really all the money is there, except they added a little bit more. And then of course there's language, which you have talked with Katie about the difference, which is another area. But in terms of the money, it's, it's all there in one form or another. And they didn't really tinker with the scholar. They didn't tinker with the scholarships at all in terms of the language, um, and then they, you know, tinkered a little bit with the system analysis study and the financing studies. But um, is essentially the money sections remain intact and two hundred thousand more. So, um, Nolan, uh, I don't remember when we passed um, H one seventy one. Did we leave off? funding for the um, Joint Fiscal Office financing study as well. I see that in, as amended by the Senate, we'll have to make that appropriation next year. Did we do yeah. the same thing? Yeah, you had it pushed out even farther. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> so they moved everything closer. And again, I think okay. the conversations were around timing and funding. And I think part of it was the conversation was still evolving when we were having this discussion in your committee. And I think that it, it evolved further in the other committee. And I think we were mm -hmm. sooner. And there was a big push to get everything sooner. And the funding was there. So thank you. There's my thank two, you. two seconds. I hope that was helpful. Yeah, um, it, it's very helpful. It points out those things. <clears throat> and I think that um, it can give us a uh, a start of where we want to have a conversation and who's going to do what kind of research and um, who do we need to talk to. Yeah. So th thank you, Nolan, very much. Glad to help, always. Our, and thanks for being so uh, available <laughs> and uh, anticipating our needs by saying, I have a new new uh, joint fiscal, uh, fiscal note, so thank you. Um, so committee, um, if I recall, it was um, uh, Jessica and Topper and Teresa who were our um, team on this bill. Am I, is my memory correct? Um, so I think we need to do some figuring out um, around what some of this means. Um, and um, <clears throat> per, I'm wondering who wants to um, talk to maybe Ginny. Um, you'll have to talk louder than that, Jessica. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. I'm happy to do that. I can talk to Ginny. I, I also, maybe we could set up a time for the three of us to meet with Kimberly. Yeah. Okay. I I feel like it would be helpful for us to do that before we talk to Jenny. Okay. Just to make sure that we all are understanding, you know, what we think that we just went through and heard and, um, and um, sort of seeing, seeing where they're at. Yeah. I think that would be helpful. Um, <clears throat> I may be unnecessarily complicating things. But since this has to do with ARPA money and the House at one point had um, passed a budget with a way of how the House was going to deal with ARPA money, I want to get clear. I would ask, we need to get, from my point of view, <clears throat> clarity from appropriations that were in sync. Um, you know, that we're not saying, oh, this is horrible when appropriations says this is the kind of thing we're going to do. <clears throat> um, in terms of some things or not. Um, but in terms of what folks have heard thus far, um, what are your, I mean, we've heard from Teresa and we've heard from um, Topper. Uh, 
What are some other, and from Jessica, around some questions or concerns? What are other questions or concerns we have? Madam Chair? Yeah. Um, uh, yes. I, I haven't looked through all of my emails, but I know there's, there's one from uh, the administration and there's one from um, the community action agencies. Mm -hmm. And um, I wanna, they're both quite lengthy. I've read both of them, but I need to read them again and absorb them. And okay. So I, I think the three of us need to look at them and understand what's going on there to make sure that we're, we understand what they're talking about and um, also understand what we had intended in 171. And okay. to see if it's, if it's in that bill. Okay. I haven't looked at my email to see if I have those as well, but <clears throat> thank you. Um, I think I think for me, it, it's uh, on the ARPA. I, I understand what you're saying, Madam Chair. I, for me, it's not as much about, um, you know, the Appropriations Committee, I don't know, from my perspective, can figure out with Senate appropriations how they want to spend and where and if it's going to be general fund or if it's going to be ARPA right. and all of that kind of stuff. I That is not... Uh, honestly, not as much of a concern for me to uh, make sure that it's the things that we intended to fund are funded, and that appears to be the case. Um, <laughs> and then the second thing is um, really about community and stakeholder input um, about how this massive investment of resources <laughs> would be spent. And I, you know, I there's that piece that's in the budget, but that's only part, it's only half of the money. It's not all of the money. And um, so, um, you know, that, that would, that would be just on first blush, sort of the, the biggest thing for me. But like Topper said, I, I, I have to go through and read, you know, compare what passed out of the house, you know, word by word. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate what Katie did on the side by side. Um, that's, very helpful, but we have to also look at the language in the budget and make sure all the pieces fit together. Okay, yeah, I agree. It's going to take some. <clears throat> I mean, we've we've got the side by side from Katie and the um, Senate passed one seventy one. Uh, I think is in our in our um, if not on Fridays, it's in today's. Uh, calendar. Um, the budget, I'll, I'll probably look on joint fiscal page to find it um, in terms of that. Uh, <clears throat> so this, I mean, this will be one of our, uh, probably our biggest um, figuring out between the House and the Senate between now and the end of uh, the session. Um, this and then looking, making sure we're seeing what happened to, to our recommendations that actually made it through the process in terms of the budget, what happened to them on the Senate side um, and things like that, um, just so that we know where things are. Um, I, I want to say, and other than that, um, the... Um, the, the child the child youth and family advocate bill seems to be solidly in rules despite the fact they had said that they wanted it and wanted to work on it and um, I'm not quite sure what's happening with um, buprenorphine the um, if you listen to the press it seems like it was going to be moving um, it still seems to be in rules. So um, uh, we'll just see what happens. Um, uh, that said, in terms of the whole general concept of um, prescribing buprenorphine, <clears throat> the um, federal government has uh, um, made some changes in um, who can prescribe um, um, buprenorphine and prior to this time, um, any uh, a physician and whatever who wanted to prescribe um, buprenorphine had to take a eight hour 
course or whatever, and then maybe um, other healthcare providers who can prescribe had to take a 24 hour um, course of study and that has been changed. Um, the uh, Biden administration has um, lifted those um, restrictions and lifted the restriction that the um, that, that the providers have to in the providers offices, the physician and provider offices no longer have to um, indicate that they have uh, counseling available or something like that. So the I guess the point of doing that was to ensure that buprenorphine was going to be perhaps more readily um, available through um, through doctors' offices and other prescribers. We'll see what happens. Um, and then Teresa, I don't know what's um, happening to the to actually to the bill that you reported it. Um, because the Senate committees seem to be the Senate morning committee seem to be slowing down. Um, that's all I've got to report, Madam Chair. Back to yeah. what you just said. Okay. Much to my dismay. Okay.